Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, March 26. Senator Pernell Charles Jr. is now a cabinet member. He has been appointed Minister Without Portfolio and the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. Senator Charles Jr. will be working with Prime Minister Holness on the Housing and Infrastructure Portfolio. The former Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trades appointment became effective on Monday. In a release, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said Minister Carl Samuda has been assigned to the Ministry of Education, where he is conducting an administrative review. We will be looking at all aspects of the ministry where improvements are necessary to ensure that the delivery of the service, that they will be done and done efficiently and as quickly as possible. That there is no need for anyone to have any sense of apprehension as to the future and the direction of the Ministry of Education. Prime Minister Holness maintains oversight of the Education, Youth and Information portfolio as the Administrative and Governance Review continues. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has tabled legislation to complete the merger of the island's education and training agencies. The Human Employment and Resource Training Amendment Act 2019 was tabled in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. It gives further effect to the government's policy in 2016 to merge the National Youth Service Board, the Apprenticeship Board and the Jamaican Foundation for Lifelong Learning Limited with the Heart Trust NTA. What it does is create a stronger institution. Now you have one focused body dealing with training, youth attachment and remediation. At the end of the current fiscal year, Heart Trust will have an annual enrollment of over 119,000 and certification is projected at 59,000. For the upcoming period, the figure is expected to reach 153,000 in enrollment and 101,000 for certification and training. Over 2,300 residents served by the Font Hill water supply system in St. Thomas are now enjoying access to potable water, thanks to the newly installed 1,050-centimeter pipeline between Davis Mountain and Font Hill Square. It's part of Phase 1 of a $19 million upgrade of the water supply system, which will include pipe laying and repairs, as well as rehabilitation of a chlorine contact chamber. The Font Hill Water Supply Project formed part of government's observation of World Water Day, celebrated on March 22 under the theme, Leaving No One Behind. This project will enable the residents of Font Hill and surrounding areas to have water supply on a regular basis, but three days a week initially. As we develop the system, we will be able to extend that so that you will have water supplies, reliable water supplies to serve the community for the full week. Subsequent to World Water Day, further works will be carried out and will include pipe laying from Fontil Square to Buckingham and the supply and installation of three 1,000 gallon storage tanks at Buckingham. These additional works are stated to be completed by June 2019. The next phase of the project will see the construction of an entombment at Janga Spring and the replacement of the 1.2-kilometer pipeline between Janga Spring and Davis Mountain. The Font Hill Water Supply Upgrade Project is a partnership involving the Ministry, the National Water Commission, Rural Water Supply Limited, Water Resources Authority, and the Adaptation Program and Financing Mechanism for the Pilot Program for Climate Resilience in Jamaica. The newly refurbished Stadium East running track was officially opened on Monday. It was renovated at a cost of 71.5 million Jamaican dollars and will provide local athletes with additional access to a training facility. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Sport Minister Olivia Grange says the track was completed within the budget and will facilitate warm-up events and high school competitions. This holistic approach in sports by government is a plan that will provide the enabling environment that our sports people need to achieve global success. It is a plan to bolster investment in coaching, in facilities and welfare at the national and community levels, as well as in schools. Still on sport, government will be spending 12.6 million Jamaican dollars for a pilot project to provide hurdles to 25 secondary schools across the island. The hurdles will be presented to the school's track clubs. Sport Minister Olivia Grange says the initiative is to develop the skills and expand participation in hurdling among student athletes. You see, the Board of SDF, in preparing its development plan, identified a problem. The performance of our athletes in the hurdles is outstanding, but participation is not widespread. 
Jamaica is excelling in the hurdles at the international level, yet only a minority of our schools participate in the discipline at jams. Minister Grange says the cost to supply the neediest schools with at least 20 or two flights of hurdles is being explored. This is the minimum required to develop competitiveness. And finally, selected tax offices will be opened this Saturday, March 30, to facilitate property tax payments that are due April 1. These include offices in St. Andrew, Mandeville, Maypen, and Spanish Town. Other offices in St. Anne's Bay, Montego Bay, Savannah Lamar, and Portmore will also be opened. Tax Administration Jamaica says companies filing annual employees' return, S02, due April 1, can also use Saturday's opening to do so. The TAJ warns against last-minute payment, which may result in overcrowding at its offices on March 30. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching.